Welcome to the hardcore tips and tricks advanced part. If you guys missed the first one, I put out a beginner's tips just before this one. So if you guys want to go back to that, I'll put a card up in the top right hand corner of the video. But I've survived over 35,000 days in hardcore Minecraft and that's equivalent to over an entire year played without any AFK whatsoever. In today's video, we're going to go over some very important, very crucial farms to ensure your longevity moving forward and some little bits of tips and tricks to help you basically save proof your entire world. So let's get into it. Okay, so most importantly, the number one farm that you guys will need in order to survive long term in a hardcore world is a beacon farm. I cannot stress enough how important it is to basically have beacons throughout your world, maximizing your safety. When it comes to wither skelly farms, you don't need to go overboard like I did and do an entire perimeter for your wither skelly farm. You could do these on the roof of the nether. You could do these by just buttoning up the nether. You don't need to remove all the blocks, but I can assure you, once you have one of these farms, you will have access to endless amounts of wither skulls moving forward. So that means that we're gonna need a way to basically kill the wither faster. So we're going to cheese the wither underneath the bedrock. I'm gonna show you guys how to quickly set this up. So you don't have the wither basically escaping your bedrock portal in the end. But this is my preferred way of getting stars. It's a little bit grindy. There's faster way to do it, but this is safe. Quick tips when it comes to setting up your obsidian and important things that you need to know. First off, you don't need the dragon head. That's not something you're gonna need. But what you will need is this T pose right here. Most importantly, you need this back obsidian block to be directly in the center of your bedrock here. That's important because you want the wither to basically stand up and be locked underneath this bedrock column right here. That way when we're placing down our soul sand and we place down our wither head, notice how it stands up directly underneath. That's how you want that. So let's just turn this all the way down real quick because you know how withers are and we'll take this guy out real fast. You'll notice I even have knockback on my sword. A lot of people say, like, don't have knockback if you're going to do this. Just sit underneath here, swipe away, and boom. Done. Easy stars. Also, these heads, really cool little pack. Anyways, throw that in the garbage. They're useless. But anyways, we're here for the stars. So let's go on. Now, of course, as we touched on in the beginner's guide, you're going to need an iron farm. So at this point, you should have tons of iron to build hex beacons all throughout your world. I would recommend going with quads in the very beginning because it might be a little bit difficult to keep up with the amount of beacons. And then moving your way over to a hex. I started off with quads and then I made my way up to hex beacons, which is six beacons. But I started off on four, but... This is to give you a little bit of a visual representation on just how many beacons I have laid out throughout my world. Spots like this that I don't have beacons, honestly, I call those dead zones. But ultimately, there should be no excuse for you to make sure that you are preparing properly before taking on a project and ensuring that you have beacon coverage throughout your world, giving you the most amount of benefits to basically be able to survive longer you're faster you can resist up to i think it's 60 percent of the damage regeneration so you don't have to constantly watch your your food saturation haste doesn't really help but maybe you can hit a little bit quicker jump boost can get you out of some tricky situations and strength i mean being able to kill creepers and skeletons and all that in one shot it's very nice which brings us to our next thing this is where things are going to get extremely controversial and i know there's going to be a lot of comments in the comment section below on which is better but i'm a smite boy i'm a full-on smite 
boy, and I'll tell you guys why exactly. So, Smite does more damage towards undead mobs, while Sharpness does more damage towards alive mobs. But when it comes down to it, when it comes down to being able to be overrun, the mobs that are going to overrun you the most are going to be zombies and stuff. So you're going to want to be able to kill these guys very fast. And I'm about to do something to kind of show you guys exactly what happens. Going to get rid of that thing real fast. Uh, exactly what happens when you're using smite over sharpness because this you're not able to do this with sharpness. But if I wanted to punch these guys, okay? So I've got a little bit of a fresh... I got fresh animations on. If you guys want to know what that is, you guys can check that out. But this guy probably won't mess with us. But we're going to bring a bunch of these guys together, right? So you are unable to do this with a sharpness sword. Mind you, I have beacon effects, but that really doesn't matter. But do you see how easy it is for a smite sword to be able to control a crowd of mobs from being able to overrun you? It's extremely easy. So use a smite sword. Take it from me. I've been using a smite sword in my world forever now. So to even further explain this, let me let me get out of my beacon range here real fast, just so you guys can see the real power of smite. So I don't have any of my strength buffs or anything like that also happening at the same time. Sharpness would do more damage towards these guys because these are alive mobs. But they're not really much of a threat. Like I said in my first video, make sure you have your chest plate on. Your chest plate is going to save your life. All right, so we got a bunch of these guys coming after us, right? We're going to kite them around a bit. But being able to hack away at these guys, something that people used to be afraid of back in the day, and we're able to just quickly kill all the mobs and not have to worry about being overrun or overcrowded. Imagine being stuck in a corner with these guys. Sharpness won't help you, smiteness will. So, let's get into the next thing. This next tip should go without being said, but setting up preventive measures so you don't die to stupid stuff in the game. So, I keep a bunch of things in my inventory that I always need. I have notch apples. Do I need 22 notch apples? Not at all. But I have them if I really need them. I always have golden apples in my hot bar. I always have food in my hot bar. That's a given. I always have my bow in my hot bar. That way I can take out mobs from a distance. But one of these things never leaves my inventory no matter what. And that is my fire resistance potion. And I'll explain to you guys why. So, just because you have a totem, if you use a totem, mind you, just because you have one doesn't mean you want to be using them. I haven't popped a totem in over almost about two years now. It's been over a year and a half of no totems that I've used in this world. But I don't want to break, I don't want to be popping totems because I don't want to break my own record right? Having the fire resistance potion can get you out of some very sticky situations when it comes down to being uh, being attacked by blazes. But more importantly, if something were to happen, let's say something that is out of your control, imagine this is all obsidian right here. Imagine somehow, some way, some freak accident happened and you got stuck underneath your obsidian here in lava and you were unable to get your way out of here you weren't within beacon range and everything was against you like being trapped under ice in a lake fire resistance will save you from that you want to be able to have things in your inventory to get you out of sticky situations it's kind of like being in the military and being able to be prepared for different things. I know ma making a comparison between the two of those makes no sense, but I'm thinking about more of like the Swiss army knives and just making sure that you're prepared for when stuff hits the fan because they will 
And when that time happens, you need to be able to think clearly and clutch it up. So with all that being said, at the end of the day, I wish you guys the best of luck in your hardcore journey. I know today's video is primarily focused around beacons, but ultimately beacons are your key to success. If you follow all of my other tips in the previous video, everything will come together. All you really need to do is practice at that point. Make sure you're practicing, making sure that you're building muscle memory when it comes down to your key binds and everything like that. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye.